happy to be joined again by Bailey. Yeah. How you doing, Bailey? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. good. If uh, you just tell us, you know, just as a little refresher, uh, you know, who you are and uh, what it is that you do here at Glendora okay. Recovery Center. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as you said, my name is Bailey. Mm -hmm. I'm the lead counselor here at mm -hmm. Glendora Recovery Center. Mm -hmm. So we run... I run the education groups, process mm -hmm. groups, and mm -hmm. individual sessions, all mm -hmm. that fun stuff. That, that's great. It, yeah. um, I, I, I'm always struck by, I, I think people, when they hear about, you know, rehab treatment place like Glendora, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, they understand maybe the group, the initial groups part of it and people sharing and that kind of thing. But I think it's the education part of it that you don't hear as much about. Right. If you could tell us a bit about what that is and maybe clear up any misconceptions folks might have about yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I think mm -hmm. like your initial perspective when you think of sitting in like a room with people and mm -hmm. getting educated, it can be kind of like daunting and scary uh, yeah, and I would guess. intimidating <laughs> a little bit. So I think um, mm -hmm. the way I like to view it is it's basically mm -hmm. just a room full of people. My job is to basically relay information that helps mm. people um, kind of understand better what they're suffering from. Mm. So um, giving okay. kind of like names and evidence-based, you know, rationales for why we're experiencing some of the things that we experience in, you know, active addiction, early recovery, and then the maintenance stages and everything. So okay. like, for instance, one Please. of the things I, I like to educate on is um, something called anhedonia, mm. which is a okay. very common thing that people experience when they first get to recovery. Wow. Basically, oh. all it means is um, a loss of pleasure and mm. things that we previously f found pleasurable. And so mm. A lot of the time when we get here, we're kind of like defeated and we have a lack of motivation oh, and geez. nothing seems interesting or exciting anymore. And oh. to have like a scientific explanation for what you're going through at that time, it can mm. make us feel like we're not crazy and we're not, you know, alone in it, that this is something that is very normal for people mm. to experience. And huh. there's a reason and some solutions to kind of transition out of it. Okay. Um, just, just. So I'm clear, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, in the way anhedonia works in this context. It's, you know, it's when someone comes to a recovery center, they um, no longer experience pleasure from the, the hobbies they enjoyed. And that's off, and that's due to the addiction itself? Yeah. Like, that, is that, is like, like, because the addiction keeps them from enjoying the activities? So How does that work? basically, in your addiction, you're getting an influx of dopamine from either the substances themselves or okay. from the activities related. Um, oh. Even we have a biochemical factor to anhedonia, which oh. is everything going on in the body and brain. Then we have a psychological factor, which mm. is behaviors. So okay. in addiction, we might find a rush from, you know, um, meeting up with our dealer or from even just lying and manipulating, getting away oh. with things, hiding drugs and alcohol. Okay. And when we come here, mm -hmm. you remove substances from your body plus your you know, kind of engaged in this brand new lifestyle, right. which you're kind of just dopamine depleted. Uh, and so being at this like depleted level of dopamine, mm -hmm. that's where we experience anhedonia, where we're mm. kind of just feeling this consistent state of blah. Oh. Like where life just does not feel fun anymore. <laughs> and it's temporary though, which is, mm. it's beneficial to learn that like sobriety does not feel like this forever. You okay. won't feel like this forever and it will eventually kind of go away. You, you, you beat me to it when you talked about it. I mean, when the constant state of blah is yeah. a tremendous phrase, but it's, but you did beat me to where exactly where I was going next. I mean, I mean, okay. So it's, it makes sense. It's someone coming here and they're feeling that. Mm -hmm. And then what, you know, what happens to get them past that? How does that process work? And what role does Glendora and by extension you, mm -hmm. you know, play in how yeah. that journey unfolds? Well, a consistent period of abstinence in and of mm -hmm. itself is going to kind of like shuffle you and transition you out of it because wow. your body's going to start to naturally produce dopamine again. Oh, wow. But there are certain things that you can do to kind of fast track the process, which mm. is even things as simple as just finding enjoyable hobbies again, things wow. that... You know, a lot of our clients like to go back to what they enjoy doing in childhood. Hmm. So maybe puzzles, maybe going to the park and kicking a ball around oh, or, so um, you know, listening to music that they used to like that kind mm. of brings them into this um, more positive state of mind. Mm. can also just be following up with um, appointments that we schedule. Mm. Um, it can be getting involved in a program and finding new enjoyable experiences. Mm -hmm. And health is important too. So sleep. Mm nutrition, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of solutions wow. for getting out of it, but if we don't know that they're there, we suffer a little bit longer than we need to. Mm, okay, and it, yeah. and it just sounds like from so many of the things that you're saying, like on a long enough timeline, and maybe not even that long a timeline, like if you're getting enough sleep and you're you know eating healthy and exercising mm -hmm. and all that, eventually you're just gonna start feeling better regardless. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like inevitable yeah. kind yeah. of in a way. Yeah. Like it's, um, okay, so it's, I mean, without giving away too much, I feel like this is an extension of what we're talking about. What's maybe like some success stories that 
you've seen or something maybe more recently about, you know, folks that, uh, uh, which, which you've been able to see that's, you know, very fulfilling and great here at uh, mm -hmm. the GRC. At the... I mean, I kind of view every single one of our clients as a success story oh. just for the simple matter that they made it here. Right. Um, getting here is the hardest part. You know, oh, admitting that there's a problem is just, it's can be very, very difficult. For, so even mm -hmm. getting here in general is yeah. a success to me, but mm -hmm. I had um, recently one of our alumni clients um, mm -hmm. came back and she had just celebrated a year sober. Wow. And she was explaining, you know, we were able to kind of process what had happened at the beginning of her treatment mm -hmm. versus how she feels and even her, you know, perspectives at this point in her mm -hmm. sobriety. And just getting to hear um, one of their favorite things, and I consistently hear this from the clients, Please. is that... They enjoy that we don't necessarily make them do anything. Oh, wow. It's basically solution-based. So we're mm. going to offer you kind of this platter of solutions, but then it's up to you and your discretion what you choose to do. So mm. because it's not forced and because, you know, there's nothing that you have to do, mm. when they do make those, you know, constructive choices for themselves, it feels so much more empowering because wow. they're the ones getting to choose to do it. So I, I mean, I'm just here simply to offer information and then whatever they do to like, you know, improve their life, it was them who did it. You know, I can't, I don't take any of the, the right. yeah. Right, you just, it, 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 I mean, it sounds like, and please correct me if I'm wrong and, and classifying this way, that's like you give them, you know, you provide them treatment, you provide mm -hmm. them treatment things and you provide them information and all that. And then what happens, it's what they do with it. Right. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, um, we all have freedom of choice, mm -hmm. right? So even if we're here mandated by court or, mm -hmm. you know, D we have DCFS on our back or even just family pressure, right? Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, we still have a choice. We might not like both of our options if the option is go to prison or go to treatment, <laughs> right. but I think it can be kind of empowering when um, you realize that it's you. You're the one who's making the choice to improve your life and give yourself another shot, you know, to live a fulfilling and meaningful existence. Wow, that was that was, that was very well said. Um, I mean, I those, those, those are all the questions I have for you, Bailey. Okay. Is there anything else that I didn't ask you uh, that, that you would like to say, whether it's about the treatment here, about the education, or any aspect of this? Um, honestly, not that I can think of right now. I, that's okay. Yeah. What you said was great. I okay. mean, it's, 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 I feel like you and I could have like an actual podcast, like yeah. the other we do here at work. This is, this is, this is great. Well, uh, thank you so much for taking yeah, the time to talk you. to me, Bailey. At, uh, I'm Greg Benevent. On behalf of everyone here, take it easy. Have a good night.